Coming up on Hands on iOS, it is time to talk about the incredible health and wellness features on Apple Watch. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. We know you're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. Start solidifying your cybersecurity strategy with the award-winning LastPass today. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Hello folks, another episode of Hands on iOS is here and today I'm talking about health and wellness features on the Apple Watch. There are so many features packed into the Apple Watch, but some of the best and some of the main reasons why Apple is able to uh, sell this product so well is because of the health and wellness stuff that it offers. So I've got my Apple Watch cam set up. We'll switch over to that and we will begin. All right, so here you can see my Apple Watch, and of course there are going to be some features available on this version of the Apple Watch that may not be available on later versions. And in fact, the first app we're going to talk about here, Blood Oxygen, is a feature that is specific to the Series 6 Apple Watch. When you launch the Blood Oxygen Apple Watch app, it gives you some tips. It says, hey, here are some tips that can help you take a good measurement. We tap next, maybe. And it says, make sure your watch is not too low on your wrist. Your watch band should be snug, but comfortable. Tap next. Keep your watch facing up and try not to move. Resting your wrist on a table can help. And then we tap done. Now I am going to actually move my Apple watch down and have my uh, wrist facing up so that you can see this. So we'll just move the camera down uh, with this. And here we go. All right. So I'll tap done. And I will tap start. Now it begins to measure my blood oxygen as my wrist remains steady. And as you see the seconds count down, it actually does a nice animation here as it locks things in. And look, there's a platelet. And it says unsuccessful measurement. So what I'm going to do is try to do another measurement here. I'll make sure that my wrist is nice and snug and we will go again. And this time I'm gonna be more quiet. There we go, 99% blood oxygen level. And it goes ahead and saves that in the health app on, your, on my iPhone so that I can check those values later if I'd like. I'll tap out of that and we will go to the next app, which is actually called Breathe. Breathe is an app that lets you meditate uh, using moments of breathing paired with the ability to uh, to feel little vibrations on your wrist as the app works. So we'll tap on breathe and it says, turn the crown to change the duration. So I wanna just do this for a minute and then we can tap start and you'll see a nice little animation and it says, be still, bring your attention to your breath. Ah, I'm getting more comfortable and now you breathe in with the animation and you breathe out with the animation and again and the whole time this is happening I feel these little taps on my wrist so that actually if I wanted to I could close my eyes instead of focusing on the animation there on the wrist. And then it says, well done at the end. And it tells you your heart rate while you were doing it, quite high for me. 
uh, at the moment, but you can uh, breathe again. And then it also saves this information to the mindfulness minutes uh, portion of your health app. Up next, we have hand washing. Now, hand washing is a feature that is going to let you know, uh, and that's right, it doesn't actually show up on the Apple Watch. Instead, it is available to access via the Apple Watch or the Apple Watch app on your iPhone. So let's switch to that camera so I can show you. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. IT leaders need to invest now in upgrading or adding security technologies that make remote work safer and more productive. LastPass is the best place to start. IT and security leaders will have the control they need from a central dashboard, access to security scores and dark web monitoring to see real-time readouts of your business's password hygiene, and provide alerts to employees when credentials may be at risk. For every employee, you can view their password scores, gain access to shared accounts, monitor group memberships, and more. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. So for hand washing, this is a feature that you enable via the Apple Watch app on your phone, as opposed to uh, activating it on your Apple Watch, but it is a feature that is for the Apple Watch. So we'll launch the Watch app, and we will scroll down until we come across hand washing. We tap on that, and you say, allow notifications, uh, you turn on hand washing timer, and you can turn on hand washing reminders. Now, hand washing timer lets your Apple Watch listen for the sounds of water running and soap sort of squishing in your hands. And when it no notices that, it can say, okay, I think that this person is washing their hands right now, and it will pop up a special timer for your hands to wash them for 20 seconds. At the end, it says, well done, and lets you know, hey, you did a good job. The hand washing reminder is a feature that is location-based. So if you leave your house and you come back to your house, it will say, hey, you've been out and about. Uh, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and wash your hands. I have both of them turned on. They're both incredibly helpful. Uh, what I like about the hand washing timer is that it's smarter than just, I hear sound finally and I start a timer. It will basically, if it if it's listening and it thinks that it hears uh, you washing your hands, but it's not entirely sure, it won't show the timer right away. But as you continue to wash your hands, then it will pop open the timer, but with less than 20 seconds of duration based on when it started to think that it heard you washing your hands. So it's not as if you have to kind of force it into recognizing hand washing. It's smart enough to hear it. And if it heard something that wasn't hand washing, then it won't pop up and it will just go on about its day. Uh, but one of the things that I like about this is that it is also saved in the health app. And so you get a nice bit of information about your average hand washing durations. So you can kind of shame yourself if you'd like. Let's flip back to the Apple Watch camera. Another feature that is available is cycle tracking. So for those who have a menstrual cycle, they can use this to kind of uh, keep track of and understand their overall health by doing cycle tracking. So it just helps you keep track of your menstrual cycle and gives you insights on that based on the track that you give it. So uh, for me, this is not something that I have set up within my Apple Watch, but the cycle tracking features are available there and in the health app for iPhone. Uh, the next one after hand washing is heart. Uh, the heart app is kind of a multi-purpose app. Uh, it will measure your heart rate actively so you can see that it's currently measuring my heart rate. Uh, there's a little notification at the bottom there with an animation that's showing my current heart rate of 89 beats per minute. And it read 101 beats per minute about three minutes ago, now 96. I have a faster heart rate than the average person, um, just sort of by default. But uh, of course, this can give you notifications when your heart rate is too high or too low, and it will pop up notifications to let you know that. Um, and then it also measures your walking average and your resting rate, meaning that when you are at rest, what your average heart rate is, when you are moving around, what your average heart rate is. And it starts to use that information to get a better picture of your heart rate so that it can notify you if it needs to. 
Um, this is something that is kind of constantly working and will give you notifications if your heart rate is also irregular. So that's an added feature. Paired with the heart rate app is the ECG app for later versions of the Apple Watch that have an electrocardiogram feature, a one lead ECG. You can tap on that, not Ecobee. You can tap on the ECG app and it says, touch to take an accurate ECG, your Apple Watch needs to be snug on the wrist. Select it in settings. Currently, that's your left wrist. And that is the uh, wrist that my Apple Watch is on. So what it needs you to do is hold your finger on the crown to form one part of the contact. The other part of the contact is actually on the back of the watch. And it uses that to measure the electrical signals from your heart. So I will go ahead and tap on that digital crown and hold my finger there like so. And it takes 30 seconds. And as you can see, this ECG does not show signs of atrial fibrillation. I have normal sinus rhythm with an average of 97 beats per minute. After you do it, you can actually add symptoms if you aren't feeling well. So I'll tap on that just to show you if you're having rapid pounding or fluttering heartbeat, a skipped heartbeat, fatigue, shortness of breath, lots of different features that you can add if you are feeling any of those symptoms. Um, but I'm just going to tap done. And now that information is saved into the health app on my phone, accessible via for me and accessible via my doctor, should I choose to send that to them. The next feature is once again one that we will have to uh, scroll down to get to here. And that is the noise app. So the Noise app is a pretty cool one because it uses the uh, information that is provided by the National Institutes of Health uh, for what average noise is healthy or unhealthy for your ears to hear and what can cause hearing damage over time. Uh, by having this turned on, it can consistently and constantly listen into your environment, not to actually hear the sounds, but to know the volume level of the noise around you. And by doing so, it can give you notifications when the sound around you gets to be too high and let you know, hey, you should move out of this environment. So right now it says uh, the volumes around me are okay. They're not going to affect my hearing at 65 decibels. But if I were to open this at a concert, for example, which of course not many of us are going to these days, uh, that value would be a lot higher and it would give me a notification letting me know, hey, you're not in a great environment right now. What's cool is that with this activated, it is also saving information to the health app where I can see the average noise over time around me. And the last one is a, a feature that is available via activity, and it is called the stand reminder. So we are going to have to go to the iPhone app once more to get to that one. So on our phones, we will activate the health or the, rather the watch app once again. And we will go down until we get to, or rather, rather up until we get to activity. From here, we can see the option. It's called stand reminders. And what this says is receive a reminder to stand if you've been sitting for the first 50 minutes of an hour. So the goal uh, of the Apple Watch and its activity rings is to measure your activity throughout the day. And Apple splits this up into three categories, exercise, overall move, meaning calories burned is essentially how they measure that one, and standing. Because the idea is that a sedentary lifestyle is a very dangerous one for your health. And so you want to have stood at least once in at least 10 to 12 hours of a day, of a given day. So that means that within those 10 to 12 hours, it can be, you know, spaced throughout. It doesn't have to be one right after the other. At least once you should stand within one of those hours, within each of those hours. And so if from 2 p.m. to 2.50 p.m., the Apple Watch has not detected me standing up, then it gives me a little notification on my wrist and says, hey, you might want to go ahead and stand up because you have been sitting for this whole or almost this entire hour. So then you get up and you move around and you're good to go. 
Uh, of course, this also is tracking your exercise, which is, of course, a higher heart rate and movement measurement. And so it will start to, at the base, it does 30 minutes of exercise. And then your move goal, which you set when you set up your Apple Watch, that can be anywhere from 350 calories and up from there. So burning a certain amount of calories will then fill that ring. So you've got those three rings to fill, but the stand reminders are kind of the ones tied specifically there where you will get a notification on your wrist letting you know, hey, you might want to stand up because you haven't done that for an entire hour almost. And of course, uh, the breathe feature is another one that you can set up for notifications right there on your wrist. Folks, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Hands on iOS, a quick look at all of the health and wellness features on the Apple Watch. If you have questions for me about the Apple Watch or questions about iOS in general, questions about watchOS, tvOS, all the OSs that are Apple related anyway, uh, you can send those to HOI, Hands on iOS, at twit.tv. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the show. We are on YouTube at youtube.com slash hands on iOS, as well as twit.tv slash HOI, where you can subscribe to the show in both audio and video formats in all the different places you want to be. So if you're a Google podcast or an Apple podcaster, a Spotify -er, or any of those things, head there. That's where you can get uh, the subscription and make sure that you get the episode as soon as it's available. I love answering your questions, so remember to send those in to me uh, if you have anything you want to learn. But until next time, I have been Micah Sargent, and this has been Hands on iOS. Goodbye. I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on Twit.tv, along with my co-host Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show, and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to Twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that and you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.